Hello, I'm librarian Ian Fraser, and this is a video tutorial on avoiding plagiarism. There are two major types of plagiarism, intentional and unintentional. Intentional plagiarism is pretty obvious. This is where someone consciously uses another person's work and claims it as their own. This is usually what people think of when they think of plagiarism. Examples include, but are not limited to, getting another person to write your paper, copying and pasting sections of another work without quoting or crediting, or submitting the same work for more than one assignment. This last scenario is called self-plagiarism and is as serious as plagiarizing the work of another person. Avoiding this type of plagiarism is pretty easy. Simply don't steal or buy another person's work and don't reuse another person's work without crediting them. In fact, intentionally plagiarizing someone's work and doing it in a way that isn't easily detected is actually much harder than just simply writing an original paper and crediting the sources you use. The second type of plagiarism is unintentional. In this case, you've simply forgotten to cite another person's ideas, or you haven't cited them correctly. Even though you aren't actually trying to plagiarize, you're still not giving proper credit to your sources. You can get into as much trouble for unintentional plagiarism as you can for intentional plagiarism, so take care to cite your sources correctly. There are a few key things to keep in mind to avoid accidental plagiarism. First, don't leave your assignments to the very last minute. The stress of writing a paper the night before it's due will often lead to shoddy referencing. If you're in too much of a hurry to get to your 5,000th word, you may not be paying close attention to how you're crediting your sources. Second, keep your notes organized. Every article, book, website, or other source that you use will need to be cited. So take care to note down where each idea came from. This can be as simple as writing the title and author at the top of the page before you begin reading and taking notes. Lastly, you'll need to know how and when to cite your sources. There are many different formats or styles you can use. It's best to check with your professor to see if you should be using a certain style. We have all the major style guides available in the library, and there are a number of good websites that summarize the basic elements of each style. No matter which style you use, you'll need to provide a citation for any quotations you include. So if you use someone's exact words, you'll put those words in quotation marks and credit the author in the text, and again at the end in your works cited list. Now even if you change around the order of the words or use fancy synonyms or what's called paraphrasing, you're still using another person's idea, and so you'll need to cite them as a source. The main advice I always give is to cite everything that is not your own original idea. If you read it or heard it somewhere, you need to indicate where. At the end of your paper, you'll include a list of all the sources you used. As an example, I consulted the University of Victoria's webpage on plagiarism in preparing this tutorial. I'll give them credit for their ideas here with a reference in APA style. You can get more information about plagiarism by consulting the section in the course calendar on academic misconduct. Also, feel free to contact the library with questions. You may also consider using RefWorks, a special online tool to organize your readings and create bibliographies. I'll save a demonstration of RefWorks for a future tutorial. Thank you for watching.